anyone who is merciful over vicious people ultimately will become vicious towards merciful people. There is no permission from the Torah to have any mercy whatsoever during war. Not on children, not on women, not on anybody. Why? Because if a person understands what is war and why you're fighting, you'll understand that by being merciful on the, on the vicious... You know, a lot of people think that in order to... If you are merciful in the vicious, Peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice came in good and clear. And sorry, this is like a, a commercial break as usual. Uh, so what we see in the front of us, that Mimi, uh, Mimi Dawa, peace be upon her, she is going to expose this rabbi who he said, in the time of war, there's no mercy for anybody. And they are going to expose him for sure. I mean, look who is talking. A person who follow a scumbag like Muhammad, a person who killed every single Jew in Arabia. I mean, what happened to the Jews in Saudi Arabia? How come there is zero Christian, zero Jews, zero uh, 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 other religion? There is zero of everything. Because the Muslims, they were merciful on everybody. We will go back to this scumbag. By the way, I found a new name for Ali Dawa. His name is Ali Shetwa. I just came with this name because he bring all the shit on his prophet. Sorry, I have to use the word. So a Muhammadan is going to teach us now, he want to teach the Jew how to be merciful. How to be merciful. Go. He goes on to mention, mm. he goes on to mention uh, more stuff. Uh, he mentioned the Amalekites. You it's must the, remember what Amalek has Zuhim, done to you, says Zuhim, our Zuhim. Holy Bible. And we Zuhim, do remember Zuhim, and we are fighting Zuhim, our Zuhim, brave Zuhim, troops Zuhim, and combatants who Zuhim, are now Zuhim, in Zuhim, Gaza Zuhim, or around Gaza Zuhim, and in Zuhim, all Zuhim, other Zuhim, regions Zuhim, in Israel Zuhim, are joining Zuhim, this Zuhim, chain Zuhim, of Jewish Zuhim, heroes, Zuhim, a chain Zuhim, that Zuhim, has Zuhim, started 3,000 years ago from Joshua Ben Nun until the heroes of 1948, the Six Day War, the 73 October war and all other wars in this country yeah so uh, how does I mean imagine for a second if a Muslim cleric for that matter was to utter anything close to that he is basically dehumanizing and they use his scripture because we have the far right who keep you know coming and taking those individuals who have extreme views in Islam these fringe views and they oh guys there is an uh, individuals listen listen there is individuals, they have extreme view of Islam. Isn't it this is the same some scum guy, scum back? He said to apostate the prophet, yes, in a country, if we have an emir, we will kill you. And we are watching you. Isn't it this is the same guy? He is saying now there's some individual in Islam. But isn't it, isn't it the individual is Muhammad himself? Isn't it the individual? To kill every Jew and every Christian and every Hindu and every every non-Muslim is Muhammad. Then some individual in Islam, somewhat. What do you mean Muhammad is an individual? You make it like this is what Islam is. You've got a rabbi here. Not only that, you've got an individual. I don't know if he's an atheist, but you know Benjamin Netanyahu, the the, the, the murderer, the scum who has come out and quoted the Malachites again. Mm -hmm. And what's he? You come in, can you can you quote quote it Malachite again? Come back, Ali Dawa. Do you dare to call me to show you the story of the Malachite in your stupid Quran? I mean, those donkeys, by the way, they do not know. Obviously, none of them knows what is in their book. Otherwise, the three of them they will not mention it. The story they are talking about is in the Quran. <laughs> they are complaining about what is. And by the way, that story has nothing to do with those so-called Palestinians, because those aren't Palestinians, those are Arab. 
If you ask any of them, are you Palestinian? They will say yes. Are you an Arab? They say yes. How you can be Palestinian and Arab at the same time? Those are Arab. They are coming from the desert of Arabia. They have nothing to do with that land. Before the year 700, not a single, not actually not even 700, after until Abdul Malik Marwan, not a single person in this land speak Arabic. The Caliphate Abdul Malik is the one who transformed the language of the local, which was either the Hebrew or the Aramaic. He forced everybody to speak Arabic. He did the same everywhere, in Egypt, in Morocco, in Tunis, wherever they control, everybody have to speak their language. So now, this scumbag, he is exposing the rabbi for something written in his book. Let us go and talk about the Jews specifically. This is Allah in the Quran commanding the Jews to kill everyone he is a Palestinian. This is in their book. This is not the Torah. This is not the Bible. This is the yellow pages of Muhammad. If you remember, uh, last week, what was the name of the video, guys? Somebody can remind me. When this guy from England, he is a Muslim like them, I think he's from their team. He called me and he said, literally, the reason at that time they were allowed to kill the Palestinian because the Jews at that time, they were Muslims. Anyone remember the name of the video so we can play it? If somebody can tell me what the name of the title in my channel, it's not in my channel. And if maybe the admin can find me which minute. When this Abdul, he called me, if you remember, and he wanted to change the topic and to talk about the Trinity. And then I showed him this verse in the Quran. And then he explained, he said, well, at that time, those Jews, they were Jewish Muslims. Therefore, they can kill the Palestinians. And this is Allah commanding Moses according to the Quran here by the way Muhammad is a thief he is stealing stories from the Bible as usual otherwise Allah have nothing to do with the God of the Christian or the Jews but Muhammad is a fraud he sit with the Jew he copied the Jews he, he heard about Alexander the Great he made him a Muslim prophet Alexander the Great he became a Muslim he hij the Muslim the, the Islamic religion hijack everything the guy who saw himself in a dream going to Jerusalem, he will go to Jerusalem, is their city. And now this potato, he is complaining about what this rabbi is saying. Let us go and see what Muhammad said. You know what? Why I want to say it to you? I will play it for you. This is their team. This is their Abdul. Ah, there's an error. Let us try to play it. All right. Enter. The Yehud, who are a people who they themselves have a history of pers of being persecuted, who they themselves have a history of being the oppressed. They are the ones who are doing the oppression. Who is the one who oppressed them? Isn't it your prophet Muhammad? He raped them, he killed them, he took their women, even they raped children. He's talking about the oppression now of the Jews. You know, the Jews themselves, they've been oppressed. But now they are oppressing people. But let us see what he will say. And what a mighty oppression it is. These people whose ancestors was slaughtered by Pharaoh and his people. 
these people whose ancestors, their sons were killed. By the Pharaoh, remember, not by his prophet. <laughs> he mentioned the Pharaoh. The Muslims, they have memory all the way to the Pharaoh, but they don't remember Muhammad killing all the Jews in, in Arabia. They have, they have a history even what the Pharaoh did with them, but they don't remember, like what? Muhammad, when? <laughs> Their memory is so good to the point they went back to the Pharaoh, what the Pharaoh did to them. But he cannot remember what the Prophet of Islam did to them. The Prophet of Islam, even he dig their graves. Not only he slaughtered them, even he burned his tree, their trees. I mean, this is how much hate he have. You see, when somebody, let us say now the Israeli, they took over Gaza again, and they did already. And now they finish Hamas. Do you think the Israeli they will go and dig the grave of every one of Hamas members or every grave of a Muslim? This is what Muhammad he did. This is how filthy he is. He cut their trees. He dig their graves. Not only he killed them. He took the crops from the graves. This is what Muhammad did. But those Muslims, they remember what the Pharaoh did to the Jews. But they don't remember what Muhammad did to the Jews. Muslims, they have a very good memory when they want. Allah Messenger, he burnt the palm trees of Banu Nadir. He, why you burn the trees? He killed the people, now he is burning the trees. This is how, and by the way, the Muslim, they have articles about how Prophet of Allah, he was worried about the global warming. And he told us to plant trees. <laughs> this is desert. And a tree in the desert is a priceless. Yet the filthy Muhammad, not only he killed the people, he cut their trees. Why he cut their trees? He want to be sure that none of them will be back ever. To eliminate any source of life for them. This is Muhammad. Muhammad, he committed genocide. And he killed every single Christian and a Jew. Chapter 9, verse 29, it commanded Muhammad, supposedly, from Allah to kill all the Christians and the Jews unless they pay him to live. And Muhammad, he made a promise. If he is victorious, he will cleanse all the Jews all the Christians from the Arabian Peninsula, and he did. As you see, all of this is authentic reference. Do you see it? And I will not let anyone live in it except a Muslim. Do you see it? So if the Jews, they kick out Hamas and the supporters of Hamas, they are criminals. But Muhammad, he kicked them from their land from their houses, from their farms. He took their money. Not to forget what Muhammad did to torture a Jewish man because he thought he had money. And then this guy is talking about that the Jews, they've been persecuted themselves and they are persecuting people now. But he didn't remember he's a prophet at all. He's talking about the Pharaoh. And their daughters were left alive. They have forgotten where they have come from. Mm. 
and they are committing atrocities worse than Fir'aun. Ah. Pharaoh killed the boys and he let the women live. Uh -huh. These people, they don't distinguish between the boys, nor... The Muslims, they distinguish between the boys. You see, the Muslims, they hide behind the boys. And then when the Israelis shoot at Hamas and to kill Hamas, the boys dies. And then the Israelis are killing boys. Hamas killed at least 800 boys and girls. The majority... Oh, the one was killed just three weeks ago. They were children and women. This guy, he never saw the videos. I assure you that he, when he saw the video, he was praising Allah. In the front of the camera, they say something else. If the camera is not going to be publishing this, they will say a different story too. Nine months old, not only they kill, they kidnap. Nine months old. Those are the one who they are hostages right now. Those are the victims of Hamas. Muslims don't see them, don't remember them. What are you talking about? They slaughter the whole families. The Muslims do not know what are you talking about. Who, where? They don't know. Women, children, old women. And this is exactly what Muhammad did. So the Israeli is the one is targeting children. It's not Hamas. Hamas, they build their, you know, actually this is the whole point. The whole point is, they want to make Israel like, okay, we can hit them. They can't hit us. We put our rat nest under the hospital, our rat nest under the mosque, our rat nest under school. And then if the Israeli did anything, we see, see what they are doing. And then the whole world go against them. But guess what? This guy will quote for us something important. And these people are a people today who sit by whilst their missiles and their bombs they kill indiscriminately. Mm. They are a people who have no shame. No shame, uh huh. They are a people who have no limits. They are a people who have no morality. Muslim, they speak about morality. If this guy, his wife, she got divorced three times by him, she cannot go back to him unless his neighbor if her. Muslim he have morality. They go and have sex with a six years old girl or even an infant. Infant. Muslim they have morality. They have sex with watermelon. Muslim have sex with, I mean, I don't want to go in details. Those people are talking about morality. When Muhammad he tied the women, her name is Ummu Qirfa. She was almost in here almost close to, to, to 90, over, over 85 years old. How Muhammad he killed that woman? You can go right now and search for the story of Umm Kurfa. He tied her legs. Between two camels. When she is alive. 
and he cut her two pieces. A life. Very old women. Actually, I found a cartoon about it. This is a channel, maybe you should guys watch it. It's called Nabi Asli. I never saw this channel before, but look like this guy is doing videos or cartoon about the crimes of Muhammad. You can watch it. So the Muhammadan who follow a prophet, he is willing because of his mercy to cut a woman two pieces when she's alive. They are talking about that the Jews doing, you know, genocide, killing, don't discriminate. I mean, they want to go at war with Hamas and Hamas between houses. And then when they shoot at Hamas, you should only shoot Hamas. You can't shoot children. Hypocrite, coward, sons of mutas. No dignity. When they asked Muhammad about killing the children of non-Muslims, what Muhammad he said, he said they are from them. Kill them. Look like Muhammad, he have no shame too. Do this idiot dare to call me? They are from them. They profit when we are attacking those people, we are killing children and women. Is it okay? He said it's okay, they are from them. They are from among them, so kill them. He didn't say avoid it, try not to hurt them. Why are you are killing the children? And remember at that time, it's just a sword. It's not, there's no bombs. When you are using the sword, you, you aim. When you are using the arrow, you aim. And people, they are fighting for a very short distance. It's not a building and a terrorist he hide in it and he is shooting at the us and then we shoot back and then the whole building come down and whoever inside the building die this is just by sword and knife so how they are doing this why they are doing this muhammad he said to them don't worry about it they are from among them so kill them do you see it This is authentic. Muhammad, not only he killed children, he raped children. Those are people who they are not even Jews. They are called Banil Mustaliq. They never fought Muhammad, they never have war with Muhammad, never did harm Muhammad, they never did anything. Muhammad the thief, he want to take their money and their women. He attacked them when they are aware, the same as what happened in Israel in October 7. As you see, even the Muslims saying they were headless. They are just busy watering their cattle. The Prophet had suddenly attacked Bani Mustaliq without warning. He did not even warn them. There's nothing. Why they were headless and their cattle were being watered at the places of water. Their fighting men, which means the one who tried to defend, they were killed. Their women and children been taken as captives, hostages for rape. How many Muslim women the Israeli army did rape until now in Gaza? If there's any number? Zero. How many Muslim women been raped when the Israeli attack Lebanon to kick out the terrorists? 
zero. How many women raped when Muslims attack any area? Tens of thousands. Am I lying? What is Bani al-Mustaliq? Bani in Arabic means sons. Mustaliq is the name of the tribe. Do you people have short memory about what ISIS did to the Yazidi, to the Christians, to the Shia? Do you? How they put the chains in their hands and their legs and they took them for the sex slavery market? Do you remember when the Muslim, they are talking about their shares of women? This scumbag is telling us, he is lecturing us about murderers. So they hide behind women and children. So when you shoot, because they don't care, by the way, Muslims don't care for the lives of Muslims. They don't care. I mean, we have a lot of population. Let, you know, this is how they calculate the thing. Let us lose in this war 100,000. Right now, as we speak, according to the hospitals of Hamas, 400 women giving birth a day. A day. Every day. How many a month? <laughs> this is just on Gaza. Women there, they have no job except sex and babies. In fact, even men, they have no jobs. All the two millions, they are living for free from the assistance coming since 48. More than 50, 60, 70 years for free. They don't have a job. Free meat, free bread, free sugar, free salt, free medication. This is what the UNRWA does. Free school. They don't just they just get married, have babies. And now, I just saw a video of someone from Hamas, or let us say from Gaza. He was complaining about the biscuit. It's a bad biscuit. So you donate to them, you give them money, you give them food, they spit at you. Let us hear what this guy want to say. And no fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Jews don't fear Allah. <laughs> I mean, what, those people are coming from different galaxy. <laughs> what is it you got Allah? He told them to kill the Palestinian in chapter 5, verse number 19, 20, 21. And when the Jews, they refused to kill the Palestinians. Allah, he punished them and he made them lose their way for 40 years in the desert. You see, when those potatoes, uh, 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 Ali Shetwa and Muhammad, uh, 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 you know, hijab, the burqa guy, they are talking about the Malachite, it's in front of you. And there is other verses, by the way, about the Muslims always they have different name for their prophets. You know, when Samuel, he been commanded to go and fight the enemy, and he did not do or did not obey him to do that. This is still in the Quran, in the chapter of Al-Baqarah. And those donkeys, Mimi Hijab, and uh, Ali Shetwa are complaining about the Malachite. When the story is in their book, Forty years, Allah punished the Jews not to enter the land because they did not kill those Palestinians.
Do you see it? They refuse to go and fight. Forty years. You will see that only three, only actually two, two men plus Musa's three, accepted to do jihad. One, his name is Joshua, or Yeshua, Yeshua, and the other one is Caleb. Now, by the way, story is a story from the Bible, but it's not what they, what says here. This is very wrong. The whole story is messed up. The whole story here is messed up. I mean, the most stupid story ever you can imagine. Never take a story, a source of anything from the Quran. You can compare right, compare right now between the Old Testament story about this and what Muhammad is saying, he will die laughing. But based on the stupid Quran, only two men, they wanted to go and kill the Palestinian. And here the story, by the way, is so funny that two men only, they are willing to go and attack them at the gate. Imagine two men, they want to invade the city. I mean, who in the world want to believe in this? There's two Hercules. Hercules Joshua and Hercules Caleb. Two men, they want to invade the city. Hey, Musa, don't worry. We go... Two of us. Huh? <laughs> I mean, who in the world want to believe in this? So, I mean, who is the stupid here? It's like, imagine I, I go and say, let us, let us invade China, me and you. They will make us a barbecue before we knock at the door. And the funny here, Allah, uh, here in the story, Musa is a bad person too, because Musa disobeyed, he did not go for war. Allah, he promised them, if you are in, victory is all yours, even for the two men. They did not go. So it was just an empty talk. And when they refused to do it, the rest of the Jews, Allah, he punished them not to enter the land for 40 years. Let us go back to this dummy and see what he will say more. Tell us about the crimes of the Jews. I mean, look who is talking about crimes and criminals. A Muslim. <laughs> and they are a people who have developed amnesia and forgetfulness. That they themselves, how they were crushed under oppressors in the past. And they are few in number. And they themselves have forgotten where they came from and where they oh, are going. Hmm. But there will come a time, ya Muslim. Ah, now we are talking. Now we are talking. But time will come, you Muslims. What we will do, listen carefully. Muslims is against oppression. Hmm. Time will come, you Muslim, to what? Tell us. There will come a time. And we relate the ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the Muslims and the Jews, they will fight. And there is coming a time where they will be fighting. And he told us, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, that the inanimate objects will speak on those days. See? The inanimate objects will speak. And this is not anti-Semitic, this is a part of our tradition. We simply relay the hadith. This is not anti-Semitic. We want to kill every single Jew. The tree and the rock, they will say, there is a Jew behind me, kill him. This is not anti-Semitic. Don't take me wrong. We want to kill every Jew. But this is not, this is not hatred. This is not anti-Semitic. No, 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 no. This is the tradition, tradition, tradition. Our tradition is to kill the Jews. <laughs> it's our tradition to kill every single Jew. This is not anti-Semitic. No, no. This is just a tradition. We kill Jews. Our tradition as Muslim is to kill Jews. How in the world this is anti-Semitic? What's wrong with people? This is a tradition. Like, you know, people, they drink coffee uh, in the morning. Some people, they drink tea after lunch. We Muslims, 
Our tradition is to kill Jews. It is tradition. Part of our tradition. We simply relay the hadith uh -huh. and we say that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that when that is, there is a war going on. There's a war going on. They have drones that say to them, Oh, so and so, there's a Muslim there, press your button and destroy it. So we're simply uh -huh. just turning it around and telling them. Ah, uh, turn it around, he's turning it around. If we go in the hadith, and the hadith it says, that time will come and you will fight the Jews. And if a Jew, he tried to hide behind a rock or a tree. The rock and the tree will say, hey, Muslims, come and kill him. Remember, he was talking about oppression. When we speak to people about how ugly Islam is, they will say to you, not every Muslim is a terrorist. Well, my friend, for me, a Muslim is somebody he follow Muhammad. If you don't follow Muhammad, why you call him Muslim? Muslim is not someone his name is Muhammad. Christian is not someone his name is a Christian. Christian is someone who follow Jesus. Muslim is someone follow Muhammad. So if you follow Muhammad, you are a Muslim. And if you are a Muslim, you are a terrorist. Because this is what Muhammad teaching. If the terrorists are not following Muhammad, then we can say those terrorists are not Muslims. But as long as the terrorists are following the steps of Muhammad, then the terrorists are Muslims and the Muslims are terrorists. Let me find you the hadith. You see, the coward did not even dare to call it, did not even dare to call the hadith clearly. He knew the Muslim, they knew it, so he didn't want to put himself in trouble. And he make the tree is the same as the drone, like the drone says there's a Muslim here, kill him. Is that what the drone doing? Because if the drone is just about killing Muslims, well, just two days before Hamas attack, there was a marsh of Hamas by tens of thousands and the stupid Israeli did nothing. If this is just to kill Muslims, they can kill Muslims every day then. They can finish you all, they have nukes. Ah, and remember in the nukes, a Jewish, rob, uh, a Jewish minister, sorry, uh, like in the ministry of, uh, I don't know, like uh, in the government of Netanyahu, he said, you know, maybe we should use nukes with Gaza. The Muslim gets so upset. This is absurd. This is ugly. This is disgusting. But the Muslims, they did the cleansing already. They killed every single Jew, every single Christian in the Arabian Peninsula. At that time, there was no nukes. Muhammad slaughtered them. And Muhammad did not finish with the Jews. This is how much hatred he has for them, not only for the Christians. Time will come and you will fight with the Jews. Until there is a Jew will hide himself behind the stone, which means the Jews, they will be the weak one. The Jews are in the run. You chase them around the world. Anywhere, anyhow, wherever you find them, you kill them. This is what this coward son of Muta was quoting for us. And yet they say they are not, this is not anti-Semitism. And then Ali Shetwa and Mimi Hajba, they are complaining about the rabbi when all the religion is about killing non-Muslims. They took even dead women's with them. Dead women's. 
I do not need to play videos for you. You can go and watch them. You show them already. They took dead women with them. This is how evil they are. The women who they are good looking, they took them and they are dead and they raped them when they are dead. There is a woman when she arrived to Gaza, if you watch the video, they are getting her out of the, of, of the truck. You will see the blood is coming from her pant. They were raping her inside the truck. Look at those faces. What they want from the Jews. They did not say Israel, by the way. They say the Jews, the Jews, the Jews. Which means if you are a Jew, you see there is a stupid organization. Uh, supposedly the majority of them, they are Jews who live in the state. They call themselves the voice of peace. I say to you, those Jewish organization, you are a voice of shit. You have no idea that they hate you the same as they hate Netanyahu and the Israeli army. Did you see? They will kill every Jew. Every Jew. doesn't matter. Just because, because you are a Jew, they will kill you. Listen to him. He will not say a single word about Israel. They keep saying the Jews. You can read the translation. It's in the front of you. And those videos are not fake. Those are Hamas leaders. Their names is known, their faces is known. The, look, I mean, the guy is holding Palestine flag. We want, uh, he's asking to kill the Jews anywhere in the world. Did you, did you see it? We have the Jews everywhere. The Jews, the Jews. All of you, 7 million Palestinian abroad. Enough of the warming up. It is time to do what? To kill every single Jew in the world. If this is about Israel, why do you want to kill a Jew who live in China, or a Jew who live in Germany, or a Jew who live in Australia, or a Jew who live in America, if this is it's just about Israel? And you know, the funny is, what make me more upset, is how stupid the Israeli government is. Those guys, they stand on the stage in Gaza. They make those speeches and the stupid Israeli don't do anything about it. I mean, why the donkeys who they are in charge of the Israeli army don't finish this guy? Why they are waiting for 20 years? Why you have to wait for every day stabbing and those people teaching kids to go and kill you? Where was the Israeli government? Where was the Israeli army? I will tell you where are they. They are just a bunch of idiots. Those leaders are not leaders. They are doing politics. They knew that those people, they hate them. I mean, you see this. This is the TV, by the way. The Gaza TV. I mean, they are just a few kilometers away from you. So imagine... All the Israeli, they hear this broadcast and they see it in their in their own screen every day. And the Israeli army do nothing about them. Two days, two days before the attack, actually not, sorry, not two days, less than 24 hours.
Those people, they keep saying, we need to kill the Jews. And Israel have the mighty power. And they do nothing. Why? Because they are worried about the international community. You cannot win a war with such leaders. Let the enemy flourish. Let the enemy grow. Until the enemy become a beast. And the enemy come to kill and rape their women. I don't blame a terrorist for being a terrorist. But where was Netanyahu? And where was the prime minister before him? And where was the prime minister before, 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 before? Those guys are there for more than 20 years. Not only that. The stupid Israeli, they thought, okay, they are in Gaza, they are shouting they want to kill us. Ah, let them there. They allow Qatar to pay for every one of those salary. Every single penny in their pocket is coming from Qatar. Not from Saudi Arabia, not from Egypt, from Qatar. And then you can ask yourself, it is the money of who to buy the weapon they have and how they get the weapon. Simply because the Israeli army, they are asleep. They are leaders in drugs. Nobody care. When I heard the news that the Israeli intelligence, they stopped watching the phones of Hamas since three years ago. Why? Because it's a waste of time. It's a waste of time to watch your enemy. Can you believe it? It's a waste of time. Those people day and night, they are saying, we want to kill you, we want to kill you. And not only that, they go and they stab them every day. If you go right now and see how many Israelis died from stabbing just last year. You see, we heard the United Nations, they are speaking about the aggression of the Jewish settlement. By the way, those are not settlement, this is their land. what the Jewish aggression is doing. So those Muslims, they attack them, they stab them, the Jews, they get angry, they attack the neighbors, the neighborhoods. To be a good Jew for those people is just to stab you and to do nothing in return. This is how you can be a good citizen Jew. They will not count how many stabbing are doing every day. Not only that, I saw the videos where, you know, people driving in the, their cars and then suddenly a bunch of kids, kids, they send their kids, teenage, to throw Molotov. They put oil, gas, car oil, use go, uh, car oil, mix it with gas and put a piece of fabric coming from the ball and they throw it at the cars on the highway burning as many cars, killing as many they can. And then those Muhammadan, they are talking about genocide when their prophet, he killed every single Jew. He raped the women. He took the children. In fact, you see the Muslim, let me show you what they did. Muslim, they say that Muhammad According to their books, even we showed you right now, he's saying you can kill them. But slavery is a business. It's a lot of money. So what Muhammad he did, 
he told his men, if you want to have slaves, the slaves you can have only if they have no hair in their pubic area. If they have a hair in their pubic area, you slaughter them immediately. So we have some stories like this. This is a Jewish guy. Explain what happened to him after the Muslim they killed every single one of his tribe. Why he is alive. I was a young boy and they were not sure about me, kill him or not to kill him. But they did not find any pupic hair, so they let me live. And here I am among you. This is what they did to kids. They slaughtered all the kids. You know, Middle Eastern, they are hairy. So you will have hair at a very young age. Now, for sure, not the same as the comedy movie, like this guy, uh, what's his name? Uh, Aladdin, you know? The dictator movie, like the guy is born, he have a cubic hair <laughs> when he was one day old. So, Middle Eastern are very hairy. Even women are very hairy. So, they killed all the children. Those are children. So, if the guy, he have one hair, in his pubic area, he will be killed immediately. And the one they don't have hair, they take them as slaves. Those are the boys. The girls, for sure, they are sex slaves. Did the Israeli line up the children of Gaza and ask them to take off their pants so we can see if you have a hair in your pubic area? How many they will slaughter if this is the purpose? This is what Muhammad did. Did the Israeli ask all men to line up, take off their pants, and the one have a hair, we shoot him? This is what Muhammad did. The Jews today didn't know they are fighting who? They are fighting the devil. Those people, they think, and this is the problem, by the way, they think they can have peace with those people. You hear right now in the news telling you that uh, they want to establish a two-state solution. Who is the donkey you want to believe? that if you establish two state, five state, ten state, you will have peace. Only mentally ill will believe in that. Because as you see, you will fight the Jews and time will come. And if a Jew hide behind a tree or a rock, the tree and the rock, they will say, there's a Jew behind me, come and kill him. So what peace do you want to have? Those people are commanded to slaughter you. Your problem is not a paper of peace. Like, you know, the Israeli, they signed a peace agreement with Egypt. Every single Muslim Egyptian, he wished to burn every Jew alive. And they will burn the peace of paper agreement with you as soon they get their power to conquer you. The Jews, they knew that, you know that, they know that, everybody know that, but nobody want to say it.
They are desperate. They want to sign a peace agreement with Saudi Arabia. Who is the fool here? Are you really going to have a peace with them? Are you going to sign a peace agreement with the snake? Those people are religious. The motivation of King Yu is not a problem we solve like, okay, this is yours, this is mine. Bye-bye, thank you, nice to meet you. Okay, you know, let us be friends. No, no, this is, this, is not the, this is not the story. The story is this is their religion. They have to kill you. And their faithy prophet, he told them already. He gave them the command. And the man is dead. We can't call Muhammad, say, hey, Muhammad, can you say something else? Like change it? Those people, they worship Muhammad. Everybody is doing politics. But nobody is telling the truth. The truth is ugly. This is not a war about land. I have nothing to do with the land. This is a war about religion. The only way for the Jews not to be killed is to become Muslims. If Netanyahu and all the Jews in Israel become Muslim today, trust me, if you kill everybody in Gaza, nobody will complain. When Saddam Hussein, he used chemical weapon against the Kurdish in Halabsha. How many Muslims did complain? Zero. Uh, uh, have you ever heard any Muslim making a video about what Saddam Hussein did? No. Erdogan, he bombed Kurdish people every day. He had tens of thousands of women and children captured in his jail now as we speak. He took towns and villages now as we speak of the Kurdish. They kicked them out of their houses and they in place on them, they put Arab Syrian instead of the Kurdish. Nobody complained because he is a Muslim. Erdogan is a Muslim, so he have a license. And, these, and then those who they are doing politics, they try to convince you that if you give them this, okay, hold on, we, he gave them the West Bank. Are we done? No. Okay, what do you want more? We gave you Gaza, okay, we gave you Sina, all the desert of Sina, we gave it. Are we done? No. Half of Jordan? No. It doesn't matter what you give them, you are being stupid. In fact, the more you are giving them, the more greedy they will get, and the more they will ask for more. Don't you hear them? They are seeing from the river to the sea, which means you have no place here. Even the Muslims who live in New York, they were shouting from the river to the sea. They don't want you anywhere near. So the stupid Israeli, because they are desperate for peace, they keep giving lands. And the more they give lands, by the way, the more they become weak, because that will give the enemy easy access. I mean, you can go in the heart of Israel in one hour drive. Israel now is so small, so there's no borders. There's no borders. You see, if somebody want to attack you and say, I mean, we have a massive land. So in order to reach to Washington, D.C., you have to go through the hell of fight. But in Israel, this is a small, tiny land. All of it, the, the farm of George Bush is bigger than Israel.
if you go right now and search for farm for sale in USA, you will find some farms in the size of Israel for sale. And you know, when you are worried about the international community, well, the international community, they don't give, I don't want to say the, I don't want to be rude. You are just being stupid. The Muhammad and they keep shouting, death to America, death to Israel. They put it even in their TV. The Iranian president, tomorrow, I say today, he is going to Saudi Arabia because they have Islamic summit. What is the slogan of Iran? Death to America, death to Israel. So a minister of Netanyahu cabinet, he said, maybe we should use nukes. The whole world went so upset but those people, they keep saying death to America, death to Israel, death to America every day. Why, if it's a Muslim, he says, you know, America is a country, is not a person. Israel is a country, is not a person. Why, if the Muslim, they say, Death to America, death to Israel. That is not a problem. And all of them, they have relationship with those people, including the stupid Biden. In fact, the stupid Biden, by the way, less than five days after he became a president, he announced that Al-Houthi group are not terrorists and he left the ban over them from the list of terrorism. Do you see the sign next to him? This is Al-Houthi. A drug dealer, Shia terrorist in Yemen. There's two signs. One in the left and one in the right. The one in the left is about jihad. But let us read the one. I mean, depend how, how you know your screen. So, in the front of me, I'm talking about the screen. The one in my right, or the, on the right of the screen, the one have those three lines in red. Let us zoom in. Allahu Akbar. Okay, this is the first one. What is the second line in Arabic and red? Al Mawtu al America, death to America. Okay, what the second line after that? al to Israel, death to Israel. What is the third line? Curse on the Jews. What is the green line? al nasr al-Islam, victory for Islam. And then you need to ask yourself, why even we have those, I mean, America, Israel? What about the rest? Oh, well, you know, America is the biggest country, is the most, let us say, powerful country. So if we finish America, we finish the rest. We do not need this to say death to Germany and death to Australia. It was later, you know, let us finish with the big ones. The big certain and the small certain. And then this is stupid Biden. He took them from the terrorist list. I mean, imagine they are saying death to America. It's in the in his back in his office, and every every each time he go on TV, this is a screen behind him. It says death to America, and the stupid scumbag Joe Biden. He take them from the list of terrorism. Why? Because Obama is a Shia. As soon, it's not even not even a week. Biden, he left them from terrorist sanctions. If you don't believe me, you can search it right now. And you know, you don't even understand why. 
I mean, those people did like did, did they stop saying death to America, death to Israel? At what day Joe Biden become a president? Somebody can tell me. Shall we search Google? When he took the office. Can somebody tell me? When Joe Biden, he took the office, not when he is supposed to elected, which I believe not true. What day exactly he became a president? officially in the office the article you see in front of you is February 16 in January January 6 okay in fact, this article actually, by the way, is not like uh, when, when the news happened, but Joe Biden right away, as I remember, right away, I mean, he took the office. This is here, it says 2021. So obviously this is not when it happened. This is when he submitted the papers or the command to lift it up. And then it take time, but this is telling you the, the priority of Joe Biden. I mean, what we have to do with Yemen anyway? Why he is worried about Yemen terrorist group? It is Obama. So in February 16, according to the article here, the Biden administration on Tuesday officially lifted the designation of Iranian-backed Houthi why? The guy, he just took the office. And this is telling you how Obama, he do everything to support Hezbollah, Al-Houthi, and Iran. You will notice right away when Obama in the office, money come like rain to Iran. He want the Iranian to sign an agreement so after five years only they will have a nuclear bomb. Which means by now they should be having it based in the Obama agreement. And he gave them all the money they want. Obama is gone. Biden is back. But this is Obama still. This is why the guy, he just took the office. If the guy, he entered the office in January 6, 2021. How in the world took him less than three weeks to do this? I mean, you have a billion things to be busy with. Why this one right away? He did sign it. And why until now Al-Houthi is not in the terrorist list? Until now. When you vote for Joe Biden, you vote for Obama. When you vote for Obama, you vote for Hezbollah and Iran. The guy is a Shia. He support them. He armed them. He strengthened them. He want them to be powerful. This is the truth. Somebody might say, well, how come Biden right now is supporting Israel? My friend, you don't understand what's going on there. 
This is not him. He cannot support anybody. You see, America is not what you think. Those guys, they calculate their numbers. 412 people, they voted for Israel. That means the majority of this country, they are in the side of Israel. This is how they calculate their numbers. So if you want to win the election again, he have to be in the side of Israel. If the majority of the Congress voted against Israel, he will change his side. Otherwise, obviously, he is the toy of Obama. He is in the size of side of Hamas. He is in the side of uh, Hezbollah. He's not taking side with Israel. In fact, as we speak, he's trying his best to force the Israeli to stop the attack. The terrorist, they have friends in the West, powerful ones, presidents. They penetrated your system. The Muslim Brotherhood is in many departments in the USA government. Do you know the organization who defend Muslim rights in USA? It's called CARE. The founder of that organization he is a Hamas founder, or from Hamas founders. Your banking system, many banks in USA funded and owned by Iran, Hezbollah, and Hamas. They make billions of dollars from drugs. They are heavily connected to South America. In fact, Hezbollah right now, they have camps in South America to train men for fight. They are not in Lebanon, they are in South America. If you don't believe me, go and search right now. Hezbollah, they have camps in Africa. They have camps in Kenya. They have camps in Nigeria. They have army camps. This is not just a local or You know, many people think this is just, a, you know, south of Lebanon. They are bigger than you can imagine. And drugs money is coming like rain. This is Nigeria. This is where? This is Nigeria. Do you see the armed forces of Hezbollah? This is not Lebanon. Those are African people. Almost in every single African country, there is Muslims there. They have an army. This is not a joke. You go, you search for South America, the same. There is a reason many attacks happen in South America against Jews.
Latin America is a huge base for them. And they have the money and they are recruiting a lot of people. And they are in total agreement with the cartel of drugs. Cocaine, heroin. Things is way bigger than what you think. Those people, they are, their plan is to take over the globe. This is not about Israel and Lebanon and the Gaza. It's way bigger than what you think. And because we have people in the state and in the West, they are a bunch of dummies. They don't care. All what they want is just business is good, money is good, party, party, let us drink beer. Each time I want to watch a video about a country, I wish I can find a video telling me about that country without talking about how good the wine there, how good the beer there. They have a brain of a mosquito. They are not living in this earth. You have tens of millions, they are willing to die for the sake of killing you. And you have tens of millions, they are willing to die for the sake of a beer. They have full controls of many offices in South America. And it's just in the front of you, but nobody, you know, I mean, nobody will mention it to you, right? There's towns and villages in Venezuela, in uh, uh, even Argentina, even, in, uh, uh, I mean, you go everywhere, Honduras, you name it. And drugs, drugs is the key. Drugs. You know, when they shot the big bank in Canada, I forgot the name of the bank. I was looking at the news. I mean, why a bank... They are saying, what? Hezbollah owned the bank in Canada? And this is a bank is functioning like for 20, 30 years? How come nobody notice? They have a huge network of money laundry and businesses in the West you will find a Shia guy. He opened a business like everybody. I mean, I open business. I am Middle Eastern. Okay, what we open? I will open a grocery store. How Hezbollah function? They will bring one of them. They will say, listen, we support you. We will buy you a grocery store. However, every month you send to us, etc. percentage of the store. We will make you a businessman. We will buy you a gas station. So money comes from everywhere. This is why Hezbollah is so powerful and so rich. Drugs, they sell to the West. Money come back. 
They invest the money in the West, grocery stores, gas stations, etc. Banks, the money come back to them again. Bigger and nicer and cleaner. And the same as Taliban, the same as Al-Qaeda, all of them, they do the same. You know, when those are like in South America, if you ask yourself why they are so like so much with Hezbollah, I mean, what is the connection? What is the relationship? I mean, those are not even Muslims. Money. They shower them with money. Those leaders are corrupt. So when you see somebody, like I receive an email from somebody in Patreon. I blocked him, actually. I told him, I don't want your donation. You, you know, don't come over here again. I mean, all of them, they are like, donate with me like $1, $5. I don't know what they, let me see what this the guy, I'm not going to say his name. Just to show you how stupid those people are. The Jews is nothing better than the Muslims. They deny Jesus as God who died on the cross. Why do you choose side in the war? By the way, the Jews left Israel a long time ago. The country belonged to the Muslims. Look, this guy is a Christian, supposedly. The country belonged to the Muslims. So Jesus never was there. And he don't will not tell us why the Jews left and why I am left. Why I left my land? Why I'm not there? So if you left, it's not your land no more. If Erdogan, he took Constantinia, this is not Constantinia no more. And this is a Christian guy. This is a Christian guy. And then he said to me, the Jews pose a major th a threat. He don't even know like to say a threat. He said a threat to the whole world. He claimed to be Christian. They don't know. He don't know that those those the plan is not about the Jews only. The plan you are included, you donkey. This is not about the Jews. Those people will take over the world. When you see ISIS, they have a map, and the map is for all the world black, even Rome. Why? What, what they have to do with Rome? Well, they hate the Catholic. They want to kill every Catholic. Okay, what about if you are Protestant? They want to kill every Protestant. What about if you are an Orthodox? They want to kill every Orthodox. It's not about the Jews only. Until now, you will find tons of videos made by Muslims speaking about taking back Spain. Thank God the Spanish, they took it. But the Spanish today, they are stupid. Even the Spanish, they are supporting Hamas. Those liberals, the communists. This is the plan in the coming five years for ISIS. This was their plan in five years. You will see 
part of Europe. This is because this is a step by step. They will take all of Ethiopia, half of Africa, Morocco. The map there is for Spain. It's called Andalusia. Europe. And the rest you see in the map. And all the way to Russia and to China. This is just five years. This was the plan. And they keep releasing maps. The more they succeed, the more they want to do more maps and to tell you what, what is the next, where we will be next. So the Shia, they want to take over, the Sunni, they want to take over, and the European are hippies. They are busy in the bar, drinking coffee and tea. They don't know what's coming to them. Their women is naked. Their men are drunk. And the Christians, who they are truly Christians, they have no lips no more. They don't. They don't even talk. And if there's a Christian, he talk. The Christian, they will speak against him. They say, this is not what Jesus taught you. Jesus taught me to be coward, hypocrite, liar, except what is wrong. The Muslims preparing an army, train their kids, teaching hatred, and the Christians, Jesus love everybody. Don't insult the religion of other people. It's not right to insult the religion of somebody else. You go to the church. The priest is a hippie. We respect everybody's religion. It is not right to insult somebody else's religion. Jesus loves everybody. Is that true? So you have one point something billion teaching their kids to hate you. And you have a bunch of hypocrite Christians making Christianity a religion of hippies. And nobody want to tell you the truth. And the truth is so ugly to the point the second you say it to people, people will accuse you of all kinds of things. And if there is a priest, he speaks the truth, people will not like him. You know, I remember when I uh, started doing what I'm doing today, which I did long time ago. Each time I speak, Christians don't even, nobody will listen. In fact, if not 9-11, nobody will be here. I remember I used to open my chat room and pal talk, hoping that people will listen. Nobody, nobody care. Ah. 20 people, 30 people, 40 people coming to listen. And most of them, they take the microphone and they argue with me. They say, this is not what the Christianity, you should preach the gospel only. You should not attack other people's religion. That's not what Jesus taught us. And then 9-11 happened. 
Suddenly, my chat room is overloaded. Overloaded. You know what overloaded? There is a limit. The chat room cannot take more. I paid from my pocket to buy a chat room where I can have a maximum number of 300. And in order to get in, you have to wait until one person leave so you can get, so you have to keep clicking at the chat room, click, 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 until you get lucky and get in. From nobody. Wanna listen? To everybody wanna listen. So it's not because the Christians, they've been smart, they listen to me. It's not because the Western, they got smarter, they listen to me. It was because of 9-11. Otherwise, nobody wanted to listen. Every single Christian I spoke about Islam to, he go against me. And the speech they give you, this is not what Jesus taught you. And then you saw them, a friend, Jesus called them hypocrite. Jesus called the Pharisees who they are rabbis. They are not Muslims. They worship the same God as our God. He called them murderers, evil hypocrites. And then they say to you, you should not insult someone else's religion. My friend, I'm not insulting. I'm explaining to you what this religion is about. They say when you explain to us, this is an insult. I struggle a lot to make people listen. Took me a lot of work. I have actually here Sahih Muslim. I never met this gentleman, but he knew me. I don't know how many years he knew me already. He was there in Pal Talk. I used to stay eight hours, nine hours, 10 hours, 12 hours, every single day of my life. In other words, I have no life just to serve and to teach. I come from work, I eat just anything. Sometimes I eat when I'm opening the computer and I go live and I stay until I cannot talk no more. Just to warn the people about what is coming and nobody might listen. Nobody. I tried to open a TV station. Nobody helped us. You know, the old days was not like easy, like now. I mean, I go live in YouTube. No, well, you know, you cannot go, go live. What live? This was impossible before. Today is very easy. I mean, everybody can make videos. Today, the, your phone is a computer. When I started, my computer take an hour to get in. Sometimes the modem is stuck. To load one video, it might take you three hours, four hours, five hours. And today, nothing much changed, really. We might see like we have a big numbers of viewers, but trust me, the number is so small. If I make a video right now about falafel, I will have more view than what I am saying now. If a woman, she is cutting wood and she is wearing a panty, she will have two, three, four million of you. It is reality. 
the whole world is asleep. Nobody is, you know, they don't care. Until those criminals, they slaughter you one by one. And they are coming after you. They are everywhere. The whole world is asleep. They do not know how big the problem is. Israel is no different. Most of Israeli are stupid, ignorant, dummy. They have no idea what's going on until now. Until now, most of the Israeli think that they can have peace with their neighbors. They have no idea what they are talking about. Until now, the stupid Western, they think this is about Gaza, Palestine. They don't know what's going on. This is about religion. This is a war of religion. When Erdogan, he say to you, we are going to take over Europe. All what we need to do, we ask every single Muslim to have six kids only. The speech is there. Still, they don't know. No, what, what? So what? They heard nothing. I mean, they even seeing the plan for you. Erdogan is not ashamed of it. Still, the European, their borders is open. Everybody come to their borders. Muslim, non-Muslims, they have no idea who's getting to the country. In fact, so, you know, soon those Europeans, they will become refugee. They themselves, they will become the minority. I went to Germany. I found I, I, I did not meet one German. I did not meet single German when I went to Germany. Not a single one. None of the people I spoke to you in Germany is a German person. I met with people from Bosnia. I met with people from Iran. I met from people from Albania. I met with people from, I mean, from you, you name it, from Lebanon, from Jordan, ex-Muslim from Jordan, ex-Muslim from Lebanon. They invited me to their houses. I did not meet one German person. So what the future of those countries? Even if there is no Islam and Muslim, and you know, you have no future. Those, those countries are doomed. The prime minister of England is Indian. The prime minister of Scotland is Pakistani. Who is the king will be? From Afghanistan, just wait. There's no British in, in England. There's no British people in England. Where is the Where is the British people? Did you see them? Go to London. It's Pakistan. So they are preparing themselves to take over everywhere. And there's a competition between the Shia and the Sunni. The Shia, they have some strongholds. Mostly it is in Africa, South America. The Sunni, they are trying to take over Europe. By population. He is a Hindu, not bad. Who care about if he is bad or not? That's not what you're talking about. We are talking about, I mean, how, how what, what happened to the country? The country is messed up. You see, England is not USA. USA, the whole country is migrants. Every single person in USA is a migrant. So it's normal to have migrants taking over the country. But Europe, 
when you see that the prime minister is Indian and the other prime minister is Pakistani. So the question is, where is the British people? Who is the minority? And who is the majority? The Prime Minister of Scotland, he want to bring all the people of Gaza to Scotland. Have fun. They will make Scotland the land of peace. Beautiful flowers, every window. So what I'm trying to say to you that while those Muslims preparing for something really big and bigger than what you think, those Western are stupid and they are dummy and they are doing nothing about it. And sooner or later, you will have a civil war in England. You know, I hope I'm wrong, but I say to you in less than 20 years, the Muslims, they will announce an Islamic state in England. I don't know which territory they will take, but they will do it. And then you will have a civil war in the country. It's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. You don't even have an army in England. Do you know that Hezbollah in Lebanon have 100,000 fighters? UK have 86,000 soldiers only the people who went in the street just last weekend if you send the 86,000 soldiers in the street what they can do they can control the street you don't have an army you are ready for nothing they trust their nukes but are you going to nuke yourself? Are you going to nuke London? So this is not about Israel and those who they think they claim to be Christians and they are siding with Hamas and the Muslim, they are stupid. Those are the Christians. Those are dummy donkeys. A Christian, first of all, he should know that the word, the holy word in the Bible is our book. And the Bible confirmed that this is the land of the Jews. It was and always will be. And no matter what anyone try to do, nobody can take that land from them. A Christian person, he will never side with evil, no matter what. You see, let us say, the Israeli is the one taking over Japan. Then we will go against Israel. This is not their land. What do you have to do with Japan? What you have to do with Japan? Nothing. Every one of us will go against Israeli if they do that. But how in the world you say Israel is not for the Israeli? Are you stupid? There is many people they claim to be Christian, but they have hatred to the Jews. That hatred have nothing to do with the Christianity. Those are evil people. Poison it. The devil is within them. There's a demon inside them. You cannot be Christian and you hate the Jews. We don't even hate the Muslims. You see, we are speaking about that all what the Muslims prepare for us, but this is that this is the reality, not because we hate them. I have to fight to defend myself, not because I want to kill. I know their plan. I, they are saying it to you. Islam will dominate the world. 
Okay, how Islam will dominate the world? We will conquer it. Behead the one who insult the Prophet. They are not even hiding what, what they want to do. Islam is not a religion. Islam is a gang. It's a cartel. It's a mafia. You give them a piece of paper as refugee. Second day, they want to change the country religion. All those people, they come for free, eat for free, shelter for free. They have no jobs. They have no skills even to do a job. Second day, they want to take over your country. They are not even hiding it for you. They are saying it to you in front of your eyes. But how you can make the deaf hear and the blind see? They don't. And until now, you know what you hear in the news. How we are fixing the problem with Hamas. And then if we get rid of Hamas, who is going to take over? They think if they get rid of Hamas, things are solved. They think Hamas is just an organization. And okay, we go, we kill Hamas members. That's it. The rest will love us. <laughs> and the other know is the donkey there. Who want to believe in this? All of them, they hate you. As long they believe in Allah and He's a prophet, well, Allah and He's a prophet told them, kill them, whatever you find them. And you will see the IDF, you know, saying in his video, we are not against the, the civilian of, Hama, of Gaza. We are in war with Hamas. We are not in war again. Let me remind you, we are not in war with the civilian of, Ham of of Gaza, we are at war with Hamas. I mean, who is this? They will never finish the job because they don't know they are. In, they don't even dare to name the enemy. The enemy is Islam. You want to fight the problem? Fight Islam. Ask yourself if the people of Gaza are Christians. If the people of Gaza are Christians, do you think what's happening will be happening? Do you think those Christians in Gaza, they will attack the Israeli and they will rape the women and they will kidnap the children and they will stab? They will not. The Middle Eastern Christians are the most oppressed. How come we don't do that to the Muslims? Egypt is the land of the Coptic. When the last time you heard Coptic people raping Muslim women, stabbing Muslim women, the Muslim, the Arab Muslim, they occupy their land for the last 1400 years. What is the name of Egypt right now? The Arab Republic of Egypt. This is Africa, how, Ar how Africa became Arab. They hijack everything. Egypt now is an Arab. They took over the country. They forced people to speak Arabic. And now that's it. The whole country is Arab. Nobody want to say what is the real problem. So let us make it short. The real problem is that we have people of politics doing politics. Nobody is saying the truth and nobody is fighting for the truth and nobody care for the truth. You know, in the West, in the East, anywhere. When somebody go for election, he's fighting for a job. 
he is not fighting for the country. They don't care for the country. They care only how to become president. Trump, non-Trump, all is the same garbage. You know, Trump, he was making a speech. I saw a video of him today. He will stop the Islamic terrorism. But he is the one who left the sanctions on Qatar. He is the one who did not allow Saudi Arabia to invade Qatar. He is the one who forced Saudi Arabia and Emirates and Bahrain to shake hands with the Prince of Qatar. Even in the last week before he left the White House. Go check it out. He is behind the strength of Qatar. Qatar, in a certain point, they were they were strangled by Emirat and Bahrain and Saudi Arabia. They will not talk to them. They will not buy from them. They will not open the border for them. To the point, the supermarket of Qatar was empty. The food was coming from Iran. It was the stupid Trump. So you change from Joe Biden, you go to Trump. Trump is the puppy of Qatar. Already he got paid. How you want to fight terrorism when your biggest friend, which you protect, and the one who rents from your son-in-law a building for 99 years. The Qatari government, they could not find a building to rent in New York, except the building of somebody who is an officially in the government in a very high position and he is the son of in law of, of Trump look at the consequence obviously Trump is not corrupt and I know many of you will be upset you support Trump right the truth hurt All the crimes happening in the Middle East, sponsored by certain countries, Iran, Qatar, and the rest is just their babies, and for sure Erdogan. The three musketeers. This is the major threat for all that territory, even the world. Trump, he put sanctions on Iran, very smart. That's a good move. He opens section in Qatar. So he closed the faucet here, he opens up the faucet there. They put sanctions in Iran, but the Turkish, they can sell and buy whatever they want. And nobody put any penalty on Erdogan. Not in the time of Trump, not in the time of Biden, not in the time of anyone. They go blind. Whatever Turkey does, they go blind. They didn't see it. Because they are corrupt. They are fraud. And now, next election, we will have election. And look who is in the image. We have a bunch of dummies. There is maybe one person. I think he is better than the rest. That is the governor of Florida. The rest are a bunch of dummies. A weirdo woman. Her name is Haley Nally. I don't know what her name. The other one, I don't know. I don't even know how to say his name. He's weirdo and stupid. All of them. So... If you vote for Trump, you vote for Qatar. This guy, he have no shame. The crown prince of Saudi Arabia, he give him a check. He hold it like he won the lotto. I mean, are you president of USA? They print a big, big check. I mean, this is like just something for kids. This is for commercial. And then Trump, he say, oh, they spend a lot of money on us. 
This guy is just a big kid. What money? I mean, this is America, you idiot. Even the Saudi, they were dying and laughing at this stupidity. Look, look what we sold them. Look how many millions. Who? What? This is America, you donkey. So they bought from you $13 billion weapon to do what with it? To attack Israel? And what is $13 billion for a country like USA? Money worshippers. No dignity. No ethic. Like, did he ask him, okay, you know what, we will sell you a weapon. What about your human rights? What about the Christian? They can have a church there. Huh? What about uh, Hindus? They can have uh, their freedom. What about you treat the, those poor Indian, Indonesian who come to work in Saudi Arabia like a human? No, no, no. All what we care is how much money. There is no ethic. Zero ethic. Money worshippers. Well, I think that Ron the sentence, at least he is educated and he is not corrupt like them. However, sometime you think of somebody highly after he's in the office, he might be act different. But for now, the guy, he was able to accomplish a lot of things as a governor in Florida. I believe he is way better than the rest. He made he made the he made the, 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 the liberals go in the limbo. I mean this guy he go after Disney for all the garbage they are teaching kids. He changed the board of the schools. I mean he did a revolution. Trump he was in the office four years. He did not even change one officer in the army. Look how stupid he is. When Obama took the office, he kicked out all the Christians who they are high ranks in the army. And he replaced them with the pure atheist. Atheist only. For sure, there's no Muslim to put them there. So all the Christians, all the conservatives in the army, he got rid of them. In the intelligence, in the FBI, in this, you know, it's everything. Trump, he become a president. He was busy making Ivanka Trump a consultant. I mean, you tell me, how in the world Ivanka become a private consultant to the president? What is her expertise? Making shoes? Fashion? His son-in-law, he can't even talk. The guy, I never heard his voice. Did you guys hear his voice? Do you even talk? And now next year, if we have Biden and Trump, what we can do? We have to vote for Trump. We have no choice, but not because he's the best. Absolutely not. They worship money. I mean, $12 billion, 12.5, that's a lot. I mean, American, they, they, they spend in the Halloween more than that in one day. What is he proud about? I mean, he doesn't even respect himself. What $12 billion, so what? A guy, his name is Elon Musk. He bought a Twitter for forty million dollars. It's just a website, forty billion. One guy. So you are proud that the Saudi, they bought from you weapon for twelve billion dollar. Are they doing you a favor? Like, is it like money for free or what is that? 
<laughs> anyway, I know people will be upset whatever we say, but reality is ugly. We don't have leaders. You know, and this guy, he keep talking about if he is there, you know, uh, no wars will happen anywhere. And yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah we saw what, what you did with the Azerbaijan attack Armenia. You brought them, they shake hands second day, the Azerbaijani attack again and took half of the land. You and Putin are the same shit. Uh, Trump is better for American economy. I will tell you why. For a very simple reason. He just support drilling for oil. We have a lot of oil. All the problem you see right now in the economy because the stupid Biden, he stopped oil production. This is a country have a lot of oil. Why we want to buy oil? This is the only difference between Trump and the rest. He support oil drilling in USA, the stupid liberals, they don't. They are willing to buy oil from Russia, buy oil from Iran, buy oil from Venezuela, your enemies. But they don't want to use the oil they have. That's how stupid they are. The oil alone can fix all the economy. Because, you know, when oil is expensive, that will have an impact in every coast electricity, transportation, shipping, making, manufacturers, everything, because everything run by electricity. Stupid liberals. But that will not fix the problem. The problem is way bigger than what you think. Trump, he was in the office for four years. This guy, he talked too much. He talked too much, but he do nothing. He keep talking about what happened. Employment was low, etc. was low, etc. was low. The Iranian, they took a drone for us in the Persian Gulf. The drone cost more than a billion dollars. This is not a drone of $10,000. Trump, he did nothing. The Iranian, they shoot missiles at American bases. Trump, uh, nobody got killed. If somebody got killed, I will respond. More than 20 soldiers get heavily injured. Trump, he did nothing. He's a potato. He's a coward. He is not a leader. And that's what made them don't respect America no more. Those Dictators, they fear you, but they don't respect you. Which mean, if they don't fear you no more, then they will not show the respect, which is based on fear. So the second they see that America is run by a bunch of potatoes, then they will fear nobody. They are all over the place. That's why you see Iran, Hezbollah, look, look Hezbollah, in Iraq right now is a throwing rocket at the, at the at the USA army. What the USA army doing? Nothing. Same in the time of Trump, nothing. Nothing. How do those people respect you if they don't fear you? They are criminals. This is stupid Trump, the same as Biden. Go and see the Trump, the President Trump, speaking about how brave Taliban, he said, who can win against Taliban? Look, you stupid idiot, how you say that? 2,000 Marines, they were controlling the whole country of Afghanistan, only 2,000. And then you praise your enemy and says, who can win against, you know, they are real, real warriors. That's what Trump said. Go see it. Stupid. Praising the enemy. Which means he is storing terror in the heart of his own nation, saying we cannot win against Taliban. He said that. 
when the reality is 2,000 Marines only were in Afghanistan controlling the whole country. 2,000, not 20,000, not 200,000. Stupid, donkey, idiot. He called him even smart. He called Hezbollah smart. And he's right. They are smarter than him. So you don't know where to go. You finish with Biden, you go to Trump, you go to Trump, you wish to go back to Biden because what we have a bunch of dumps. And people think that Trump is a real leader. He's not. See, now Trump is making videos every few days. Uh, I will do this. I will do... Okay, just wait. He will become president again. Nothing of what he say he will do. Nothing. All his speeches is balloons, like him. You know, the day he made his children's consultant for the president, I know that this guy is messed up. I never heard of somebody. He do such a thing. His daughter and her husband. None of them have any experience whatsoever in any of that. The girl is a Barbie. She work in fashion. The husband, God knows what he do. He don't even talk. And then they talk about Joe Biden and his son. What you are the same. Uh, I don't know what to say. And I know many people, they like, you know, me, myself, I voted for Trump. I was excited when I, you know, when he uh, uh, decided to go, I mean, uh, uh, he was, uh, uh, he appeared to me more honest, more natural. He said things nobody say, but then it turned to be that this guy, he says something. He go in front of the White House, Qatar have to stop terrorism. Two weeks after he said, uh, you know, Qatar, I don't know how many airplanes. And Qatar never stopped supporting terrorism. Not in his time, not in the time of Biden, not in the time of Obama, not in the time of George Bush, never stopped supporting terrorism. And American, they go blind. Anything happened in Turkey or Qatar, American, they don't see it. Congress don't see it. Senators don't see it. They go blind. The second you say Qatar or you say Turkey, they don't see it. Obviously, money is involved. Anyway, if he become president again, I hope and I pray I'm wrong. He will change. But you know, in the Middle East, we say that if you put a tail of a dog in a frame for a thousand years and you take the frame off, the dog tail will bend again. You can't make the dog, the dog tail straight. It doesn't matter how much, how long you put it in a frame. People who worship money, they will never worship anything beside money. You can't change them. Money is their God. All of them. You know, did you ask yourself why this Nancy Pelosi, she is the Speaker of the House for all her life? What is the benefit? Why they are so desperate to be there? Because they knew the stocks markets. Companies, they have to submit to them. 
the next move of the stocks. So you will see that Nancy Pelosi and her gangs, they never bought stocks and lose a penny. Their stocks is the most successful buy ever. Never one mistake. How they will make a mistake? I mean, they knew what will happen tomorrow. This is why they are so desperate for those positions. They are not there to serve you. They knew when the stocks of Apple will go up, when it's going to go down, when Tesla, what Tesla, what anything. They have the information which nobody have. It's a must. Those companies have to submit to them. And then Nancy Pelosi, she called her friend, hey, honey, my daughter, buy stocks from this company. And the other guy, okay, then, you know, and they are the one, and they got so rich. And then you ask yourself, how those people live in those big fancy villas when their salary is nothing? They are not fighting for a salary. Trump, he donated his salary. <laughs> Supposed to like... He's a good guy, you know, he don't care for money. He's here to serve you. The son of Joe Biden, he called the Chinese. What do you want? Uh huh. I called to my dad. Oh, okay, tomorrow. Okay, send me the money. Don't worry. Don't forget to send it to my uncle, not to me. Okay, okay. The big guy, the big guy. Uh, Ukraine, China. Suddenly the guy, he's, he's nobody. They put him in the board of a big companies of oil in Ukraine. Why? It's not a bribe. No, he's skilled. He drew pictures. I mean, he's an artist. Come on. This is what energy company they want. An artist, he can draw energy. All of them are the same garbage. And those poor Americans, they believe them. So, you know, I don't want to make you, like, I don't know. I mean, I already made you feel depressed, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> speaking about all those guys at the end of the day we have to say that Trump is better way 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 better than them but doesn't mean he's good he's way better than those stupid liberals but doesn't mean he is good not in my book unless he changed and my experience with people you cannot change people unless it is something spiritual happening to them. Spiritual, not physical, not money. So you can make a criminal peaceful like a dove if he believes in something in his heart, like believing in Christ. But you cannot make Someone worship money. Someone is an angel. You cannot. That is mission impossible. Because then everything he do is for the sake of money. This is God. The Lord, he says, you know, the man a treasure is where is, you know, where is his treasure is his heart. Where your treasure is, is your heart. If your treasure is money, your heart is with the money. If your treasure is God and ethic and morality and good things, then your heart is there. Those people, their treasure is money. All of them. And then you have to survive with it, hoping for best. But this never happened. But at least this guy, he will make fuel cheap. He will fix the economy. And we will stop buying oil from the enemies. At least. I mean, for sure he will do that. So he have, a, you know, he have the skills of a businessman. But when it's come to ethic, he's far from it. But at least he is better than those donkeys in the democratic parties. And the funny is their their flag is a donkey. I don't know. 
we are insulting donkeys. Donkeys are wise, by the way. You know, I'm going to tell you a story. Once, I was a teenager, we went in a mountain area, and we want to do hiking, no kids. So the villager, he said to us, take the donkey with you. We said, we do not need it. Why? What for? I mean, we are too many. We cannot even ride the donkey. He said, no, no, no. You will lose your way. All those mountains, after you pass, you go inside the mountains, they will look the same. You will not be able to come back home. You will lose your way. So when you are done, let the donkey go and follow the donkey. And you believe it or not, the donkey, he took us in a very short cut, extremely short cut, like we were like surprised. We tried first to go back. We start guessing, go here, go here. I said, okay, let's say, no, the, the guy, he said, the donkey, let the donkey let's see. And we were shocked how the donkey was able to go home. So we as a human, we use the word donkey supposedly to insult, right? Or the donkey is a stupid. But in reality, donkey, he have better, let us say, directions than a human being. Let us say donkeys have better sense of reality and direction. They are animals, yes. But they don't do stupid things like a human being. They have more common sense than a human being. You will not see donkey think he is a female. You will not see a donkey. He want to put tattoo all over his body to the point you can't even see the skin. You will not see a donkey. He want to put a ring in his nose, in his toes, in his eyes. I mean, you you walk in the street, you see those teenagers. You don't know what they don't look like. I don't know what what they have in their face. Ring in the nose like the cow in India. They put the you know ring so they can control the cow. Ring in the nose. Ring in the in the cheek. Ring in the etc. Ring in the in the belly button. Uh, ring, uh, ring in the in the cheek. I mean, ring in their lips. Ring in their tongue. Ring in their vagina. So we, we know we use the word donkey, but in fact, donkeys, they have better understanding of life from a human being. The human being is messed up. Today, before I go home, I stop in Walmart to do some shopping. And I saw two, two teenage girls. I was looking at their face. What happened to them? Honest to God. They have like at least 15 rings in their face. Two or three rings in their eyebrows, in each one of them. Rings in the, in the like, you know, like where your, your eyelashes underneath of the eye. I mean, this is very painful, very disgusting and very stupid. Ring in their nose, one from here, one from here. And then there is a ring go inside the nose, like between the things and come in like the cow thing. Ring in their lips. They just pass by, I can't believe it. I mean, this is, they look stupid, they look ugly, they look dummy, they look weird. And yet, you ask yourself, where is the parents? And what happened to those kids? How they end here? How they end in such a situation? Imagine those people, they will become our coming president. So the coming president will be somebody have ton of rings in his face, in his nose, in his toes, in his, uh, in his vagina, in, her, in, his, in, her, in his penis, because today you don't even know who's, a, who's the one who has a vagina, who's the one who has a penis. Or maybe those... Uh, who change their, the look of their body. One guy want to be a frog, the other guy want to look like a lizard, the other guy want to be a Korean, 
I mean, can you believe it? Somebody is a singer. They want to be like him. Okay, tomorrow we have a new singer. I want to be. So today I want to be Korean. What if, what if the guy is an African tomorrow? He will be African. But how he can be an African? But uh, okay, what if you, okay. The, the actor you write today is African. So now they do body modification to you to be become African. What if the guy you like him tomorrow, he's a redhead? What you would do? I mean, it's really messed up. So you have a religion, they want to conquer you. Their dream is to take over you. And you have generation which is messed up. I don't know what to say. How many of you is upset from me now? Give me one if you're upset. <clears throat> what we can say? I guess we say it all. Anyway. You know, still, I believe that there is uh, like every time in life there is, let us say, the bad and the good. And sometimes bad things must happen in order for good things to happen. You know, if you look at countries like Philippines or Indonesia or Hawaii they look so beautiful right but in the same time if you think about it one day this land was the land of death not the land of a beauty imagine how powerful those volcanoes who's behind such a greenery and amazing scenery. Sometimes the land has to be burned in order to be green again. The same as a volcano does. This is why I believe that for us as a believers, we are not left alone with the evil. Of this world there's a wisdom and sometimes a human being he have to learn from his mistakes and even from his evil so even evil and whatever evil bring can have some benefit to learn from it to fix to correct to educate, to teach about it. Same as Islam. Islam is an evil belief, very evil. But maybe if there is no Islam, me and you will be in the bar right now. Maybe if there is no danger and risk, we will be doing something more stupid and we will not care for something serious. You will learn that a human being, the more he is comfortable, the more a loser he will become. This is why you see countries who have very good wealth, they are messed up. People sleeping in the street, people in drugs. People don't care. And then you see a guy who just came from India, from a poor family, successful, happy, have a family. 
He even made good money, sent to his family in India, good for him. And then you will see a guy born in his country, grow up all his life in his country. He's homeless. He have no jobs. He cannot have a job. Or he chose to be loser. So difficult time. You don't hear me, guys? Do we lose? Did we lose our voice? So sometimes difficult time, or most of the time actually, difficult time can make better of us. And that's why I advise you not to spoil your kids. Otherwise, they will become like those guys. Make them feel the value and appreciate the food, the clothes, the warm, the roof, the ceiling. Let you and your family always appreciate what the Lord He provide you. And discuss serious issues with your kids. Don't be a dummy who give your phone to your son who is seven years old and let him play games all day long. Because then he will play day games all day long, the rest of his life. Establish a generation which is people who think, people who have action and reaction, people who they are smart, people who know history. Because the one who do not know history, he have no future. You know, when they say to you, he's expert, what expert mean? It means he have history. He learn from history. Expert in anything. For your experience come from something you practice, you or something before you, or someone before you. So teach your kids and don't be a dummy. Computer games is not an education will not make your son smarter. Maybe it will make him good in using his fingers fast, you know. It might increase some skills, but will make him someone very much social isolated, not a thinker. He do not know how to answer a question. He have no idea what to say. And if he speak, he speak the F language. For this is what they do exchange when they are playing games. The future, you know, the future generation, if we don't fix our education system, is going to be horrible. Because most of the kids today, they are just stupid. They don't know. They have no idea. And those liberals in the West, they keep making education worse and worse and worse. To the point nobody can calculate two numbers together. They have zero skills in, in mathematics. Zero skill in geography. They have zero skills in everything. In the top of that, they are confusing them about their gender. So how in the world you are going to be a nation in the future? There's a lot of risk involved. And the most aggressive attack on you is the attack on your children. So if you are really a Christian person who cares for his family and the future of his kids, you cannot depend on the education of schools because the schools these days especially if you live in big cities controlled by liberals they are teaching your kids horrible things have nothing to do with education you know I remember first time I have a TV first time I have a TV in the state I came to the state I have a small tiny apartment I went and I bought a TV I don't have cable. You have, you know, the antenna. The first TV station opened for me. I turned the TV on. I said to eat. There was a woman, she was talking. I don't know even what they are talking about yet. It was a government TV station. The woman, she was speaking about putting two fingers. 
how to insert the two fingers to make the pain easier. Two fingers, pain, interesting. I don't know what she is talking about yet. After listening for 15 minutes, she was talking about how you can have sex with a male by inserting two fingers in his anus. And this is a government TV. And this was long, long way ago. It was not a living midnight before midnight. It was around 3 p.m. The first ever program I see in America. And then right away I learned that government in this country is not the one who good, teach good things. It's the opposite. Government, they want your children to be pervert. And I'm talking about the government is controlled by the liberals. And this is why the government TV is controlled by liberals until now. In the time of Trump, he did not change them. In the time of George Bush, he did not change them. They are all controlled by liberals. And this is why I say to you, if you depend on government to teach your kids, your kids will be screwed up. Like now, this guy, the sentence in, in Florida, he did a great job, actually. He changed, he took a lot of books, a lot of books. They took them from the library. Any books can teach kids to be stupid and bad. They took it away. But this should be done 60 years ago. Christians, they were watching, and they have no voice. Finally, they are moving. Finally, they are doing something. But still, we cannot trust the schools anymore. You are the first school. You have to teach your children. All right, Nafta, all right. Maybe I got you wrong, no problem. So you have every day to take care of your children, teach them about God, about ethic, about morality, about right, about wrong, and what wrong can do to them. It's not enough to say to them drugs is bad. Show them what drugs can do. It's not enough to say to them that sleeping around is bad. Show them, and I'm serious, show them. You see, if you go right now and you type in Google, sexual disease. If you type sexual disease, you will see how bad, how disgusting, what can happen to you. So when the Bible says to us, what to do, what not to do. The Bible is not commanding us to be slaves. The Bible is commanding us to be free. Sin never make you happy. Sin make you sick. And this is not a speech. It's true. Sin make you sick. Sin make you die. Sin make you unhappy. Sin make you depressed. Sin make you being tortured. Because all those diseases will do all those things for you. The second you have them, you will be depressed, tortured, in pain, not confident. You hate yourself. You don't know what to do. You don't know how to get rid of it. Many of them are so nasty to the point you wish, you wish you never had sex before. So why we don't listen to what the book is saying? The book is a benefit for us, not a benefit for God. God do not need you. God, in fact, he created you in certain ways so you can enjoy your life and sexual 
Joy is one of them, but not to live like an animal. The second you decide to live like an animal, you lose your morality, you lose your health, you lose even your wealth. And even if you have wealth, what the point of wealth if you cannot live healthy? So show your kids, don't tell them sex is bad. Show them, show them, show them the skins, show them the, the sh show them, the, sh show them the, the buzz, show them all the crazy stuff will happen to them if they sleep around. Not just sex is bad if you sleep around. Sex by itself never was bad, never meant to be bad. But because we decide to live like an animals, then what you expect, you will die like one. So, you know, I, I, like I remember I have a cousin and his son is very spoiled, very spoiled. He don't want to eat. They have to beg him to eat. You know, they have one son. So one day, my cousin, he said, I'm going with my wife. Can we leave our son with you? Are you going somewhere? I said, no, I'm going home. So he left his son with me. And he told me about his son. He's the problem. They, they, you know, he told me, I don't know if he, you can make him eat because he gave us really hard time to eat. You know, like, you know, I said, okay. I know that he is going to come and visit me in that day. So at that time, you know, we didn't have like DVD, etc. We have those old, uh, you know, video machines. You remember them, the tape? So I went to the library and I found a video about hunger, children's and hunger in Africa. So I bought that, I, I got that tape, actually, I, I borrowed it, sorry. And I, you know, I get it ready. They brought the son. He said with me, I said, I want to watch with you a video. But the video, by the way, have a lot of things is not nice. He said, like what? He said, you know, children's where they are not happy, hungry. I said, okay. So I played the video for him and he saw the bones of those kids, how their belly, how they look, how their head is just a bone. So he was saying, why they are like this? I said, because there's no food. He said, why do they have no food? I said, there's no, but not everybody have food. Not everybody can eat every day. This kid, he could not believe what he is seeing. So we watched the whole video, and then his parents, they came and they took him home. When they put food in front of him, he did lick the dish, and he told his mom, Mom, don't leave food in the dish. There is kids, they are dying. They cannot have food. My cousin, he called me, he said, what you did? I said, what? He said, look what he did. He's just even teaching us that we should lick the dishes. I said, well, this is what I told him. Because we ate together. And after we finished, I said, remember what we saw in the video? Let us clean the dish. So me and him, we start licking the dish. Seriously. I was licking the dish in front of him and he started licking it like a puppy. And then he said, yeah, we should not leave food because, yeah, I mean, those kids are, you know, like he was almost going to cry. So you need to teach your sons the value of what they have. Otherwise, they will never appreciate you. They will never appreciate the food you give them, the clothes you give them luxury, anything you give them. Because simply, they think this is what they should have. They don't appreciate. Appreciation is the key of happiness for everything in life. If you don't appreciate how you look like, always you will be sad. And always you don't know what to do. And always you are worried about how people see you. And always you spend a lot of money in making yourself look better. And you will never look better because you and your eyes, you don't look good. It's how you see yourself. 
So it doesn't matter what do you do to yourself, it's still you yourself, you are not happy with yourself. So how in the world you will like yourself? You don't. Appreciation is the key of everything. You see the Muslims, if they appreciate what God gave them, they will not be killing others. But they don't appreciate. They learn how to be greedy. They want to take over. And they themselves, they are victims of their own crimes. You try to take over others, others will stop you, will fight you back. You kill them, they kill you. And then you cry. Appreciation is the key of happiness. A woman, she get married. Her friend she got married to. Oh, my friend, her husband is better than mine. He's more worthy. His job is better. Oh, he is more handsome. No, you don't like, she don't like her husband. A year ago, she was calling him honey. A year after, she called him bunny. Two years after, she called him stupid. Four years after, she won a divorce. Appreciation. If you don't appreciate your food, you're always hungry. If you don't appreciate your roof, you never had one. So we need to learn and we need to educate ourselves and we need to educate our children. Today we spoke about many things. Maybe some of them have nothing to do with our title, but it doesn't matter really. At the end of the day, we are here to share with each other and to learn from each other. Did I say something you guys don't like? Any one of you here don't appreciate how we look like? Me, myself, I appreciate how I look like. <laughs> That's why I don't have a mirror. You know, <clears throat> I don't want to get scared. Don't scream at your child. Don't force her to eat. Well, he will eat anyway. Just why you want to beg him to eat? Okay, he will get hungry. Don't worry. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, uh, it's you know, it's just about uh, little intelligence is is uh, is good, right? Yeah. <laughs> You know, like uh, these days you walk in the street, you find women, they have things in their eyes. I mean, they have wings, they, they think they can fly. They have wings, really. I mean, what is this in your eyes, you know? And then you are like, why Why in the world women would do that? I mean, okay, do you really think that now you look better? You look funny. If you ask me, they look funny, really. They look really they look weird. First, we know that it's not true. This is not your eyelashes. And... It does not give me a good idea about you, you know. I don't know what to say. I mean, I don't want to be rude, but why anyone want to do that? I mean, what those for? You can use them for barbecue. Like, you know, you do barbecue, you blink your eyes, and then that will give some wind to the fire. So, when you are not appreciating yourself, or you start worshipping, looking of how you want to look like, then you will find yourself, you are bleeding your income, your money, your future, because you need to spend more money on the way you look like. You are so worried about how people see you. So worried. And then at the end of the day, always there is somebody look better than you. Always there is someone taller than the tall. There is always someone smarter than the smart. There is always someone shorter than the short. There is always someone thinner, thinner than the thin. So always there is. I mean, so you will be always in your life in a challenge because you don't appreciate. Uh, thank you, Dominique. I'm not making fun, fun of how they look, but uh, I'm just, you know, questioning the reasoning. You know, the reasoning is very simple. You are not happy with yourself, and you think you can get more attention if you have those. You know, 
if there is nobody, if I go in the street right now and nobody will see me, do I'm, I'm going to dress the same if a lot of people will see me? In my case, I don't care really. In my case, you don't know me. I'm a person who likes to wear sandals, not shoes. I like to wear short, not suit. In fact, I did not wear suit for a long, long, long time. I hate it. So I don't, I don't care really for how people see me. But always the question is, do you dress because you like to dress this way or you dress because people want to see you this way? If there is nobody in the street, are you going to dress the same way? Do you think a woman, she will spend three hours putting makeup in her face if she knew that in the street there's nobody? I don't think so. Right? So am I putting makeup because myself or because I want people to see me in a certain way? And you know, I learned that in some culture, they think that if you are good looking, you have a good heart, which I believe this is absolutely false. Good looking can be the opposite, can be deceiving. In fact, there's many, a lot of people, they have very good looking, they have very ugly heart. Uh, but you know, some culture are very wrong, like Middle Eastern culture, as an example, everything, everything in our culture is wrong. Even family is wrong. Love is wrong. You don't even know what love is. Love for them is to own you, not to love you. Love for them is, you know, like to strip you from your freedom, to be a slave of their own words, of their own thought, of their own plan. Everything in the culture is wrong. But yet, if you speak to the Middle Eastern, like me, they will tell you how much proud about their culture and how better they are than the Western. But if you go in details and reality, you will see how awkward, how stupid the culture they have. Women makeup and dresses, etc. You know, feminine. Well, you can be feminine without all those things. And I'm not saying don't put makeup. I'm saying you have to have reasoning with your things to you do. I understand if you are a little bit old trying to cover the wrinkles in your face. Okay. Uh, but don't be obsessed with your look. Anyone have a question? Love is a good lipstick. And I know people like the way I say lipstick. <laughs> and they told me, why you don't change the way you say it? I said, I'd like to say it this way. It's lipstick. It's not lipstick. So it says lipstick. You know, uh, I know. Sometimes I look at women, I find that their lips is so red. They look like a bear. They don't look like female anymore. Uh, especially those like very red, you know, I mean, I don't know what is that. Uh, I, for me, I prefer to eat kimchi and that will make my uh, lips naturally red. <laughs> or, you know, in the other day I ate, uh, I ate uh, hot paper. In fact, the first one I ate, it was, it's not spicy at all. It's not hot. The same from the same plant. So I ate the first one carefully. I did bite the top of it and you know, there's no, it's not hot. So it's like I ate it, all of it. Then I thought the second one will be the same because I just, I get from the same plant. I did bite almost half of it in one bite. And I got not only the ribs steak, I start speaking German, gypsy, Chinese, you name it, all languages in the world. I don't know what happened to me. I, how in the world it's from the same plant one of them is not as spicy at all and the other one is hot like crazy anyway it's good to speak languages uh, <clears throat> all right
And actually, you know what? That taught me something else too. I mean, you have the same plant, right? The same plant. And I, I took them from the plant by myself. And then one of them is so spicy, crazy spicy, and the other one is not at all. So that was like a way to teach me to teach me a lesson. Is to be careful. Don't assume. And this can happen to us. We can be both is born from the same mother, but we can be totally the opposite. One is cold, dead cold, and one is hot, crazy hot. Don't assume. I assume that if the first one from the same plant is not hot, the second one will be the same. And I was wrong. Do you have information about six, eight number? Well, there's nothing there. I mean, those Muslims are really, you know, the, the alphabet, the Arabic alphabet, they have a equal numbers. And those, it's just summary of numbers, summary of letters. They mean nothing. 